Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me to take the Vantage GT8 out today. Now, I haven't actually driven my GT8 since it had those little problems. I haven't taken it out for a proper drive, which is pretty poor on my behalf. But today, it's going to get the leg stretch. We're going to take it out to go and meet up with the GT8 club, which should mean around seven or eight GT8s, plus some other pretty cool cars to join the gathering as well. It's also, believe it or not, coming up now to being three years old in just a couple of weeks. That time has flown by. I still absolutely love the car though, so let's get it uncovered, get the trickle charge unplugged, take it on out and go have some fun. I've just driven over actually in the G63, which is utterly filthy. The weather outside the last few days, well, that kind of mess happens. The Lusso is parked pretty, the GT, the LT at the end, but let's get the cover off the GT8. We will have the very, very noisy startup in just a moment. I think I might need to put on the extended splitters because we're gonna be taking some photos as well today. And always the car just looks a little bit better if you do pull this up. I do like having the matched cover, of course, to the car, but this thing, it's just, cool in an inexplicable kind of way. Anyway, let me uh, let me crack on with this. Bit hard to do holding a camera. Then we'll get the noise uh, of the startup and bring it back into life. We're all set then, which means it is time for the cold start, which in the GT8 is always one of the very best sounds ever. So let's hop on board. And like I say, let's hope that this is going to work. Might be a tiny bit hit or miss, but let's give it a go. I'm trying to fire the car into life. Oh yes, that's what we like. Bang on cue. I'm going to give it a moment just to get warmed up, come into life, get running. But around here, deep, 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 deep rumble. Oh. And yes, you might have heard that. Alongside, actually, a friend also has his GT8 here. So we've got two GT8s. We're going to be driving together to head over to the meet location. But yeah, good times for running. No issues with the battery. That was my first thing. Fingers crossed. Give it a second and we'll head straight on out. We are cruising into central London. The navigation is saying that there is a bit of a traffic jam ahead, so I'm hoping it's not gonna be too bad, but unfortunately it looks horrible. That is not what we wanted. I am following the other GT8 in front of me to go and meet up, as I said, with about seven GT8s, plus some members of the GT8 club bringing some of their other cars as well, or maybe not bringing their GT8s if it's in for service or something like that. So we will have a few other pretty cool cars joining as well. We are headed towards Regent's Park to the inner circle, a nice place to meet up, lots of room to park with all of the cars and hopefully take some nice photos as well. Speaking of which, when I get there, I will have to jump out to put on the splitters at the front of my car because the GTA always looks so much better when they are fitted. But of course, the downside of them being fitted is when you have to go over speed bumps and to get in and out of garages, they are less than convenient because they make the front of the car very low to the ground. And of course, that is directly onto the expensive carbon fiber and nobody wants to break, damage or crack any carbon fiber. For now though, this is the worst possible car to be sitting in a traffic jam with. Heavy clutch, manual gearbox, total disaster, but it's a nice view in front of us with the other GT8 in the green. And I always thought green for an Aston Martin, that's pretty nice. It looks really smart. Not kind of bright and in your face like this one is in blue and orange. The sun is also much, much, much brighter than I was expecting today. It clearly rained a little bit earlier because the ground is a bit wet, but mostly a blue sky, which is always good for a nice gathering with the cars. Just unfortunate, we're gonna have to sit in this traffic jam for a bit before we actually get there. While we have what seems to be the longest final mile ever to get to where we're meeting with the others, let me tell you a little bit more about this car now that it's getting to three years old. That time has flown by since I took delivery of it at the Aston Martin factory in Gaiden. And of course, that means it was about this time three years ago that I was at the factory filming it being built, the road to GT8, which was such an awesome experience for me to see this car coming down the line, to be able to play with some of the components before they went on. I put my if you remember on the back of the headrest also on the chassis underneath the side still basically to make this car personal it's a really special car to me but at three years old that means a few different things the first of course is that it needs an annual service that's easy enough in this car it's about six or seven eight hundred pounds per year it will also reach the end of its original factory warranty now that will propose a question to me of do I want to extend the warranty which is about I think fifteen hundred to two thousand pounds a year which isn't too extortionate considering the value of the car. My McLaren was more than double that, for example, so this isn't too bad. Of course, also at three years here in the UK, every car when it gets to three years old needs to have what's called an MOT test to make sure that everything's still running properly. They test pretty much the basic, you know, driving controls, do the brakes work, are your tyres okay, do you have number plates, but also a few other things and you might have to get some things rectified, but I think this is all running pretty well. It's got just under 7,000 miles on it 
in total. So it hasn't done a crazy, crazy, crazy amount of driving, just some really, really cool driving. Having it in Scotland, having it around Italy, Sardinia, down to Rome, chasing the Millimilia one year. So really, really nice things having transported it around. So the warranty question is, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. I don't know if I'm going to go without the warranty and maybe put the supercharger on it. I don't know if I'm going to extend the warranty and keep it exactly as it is. I've only had one, I think, warranty niggle in the entire time that I have owned the car, which was a literal uh, oil sensor reading where I thought there was low oil pressure, but it was just a sensor. So it went on a transporter to the dealer, had that fixed and then came straight back. So it wasn't a complicated thing at all. Other than that, this car has run flawlessly. I mean, this is one of the beauties, I think, of the Vantage GT8. You might already know this, but if not, it's the fact that it's a, a new car, it's three years old, but based on a platform that's like 12 something years old. So they had developed it to the max. They had, everything had been ironed out, all the niggles had been solved, which means that it's a pretty reliable base. It's a pretty solid base on which to build a car like this. And it's a really fun car to drive and it's extra noisy, especially when you have this pressed and open for the exhaust valve, which is a nice easy thing to do. And uh, fingers crossed actually looking at the nav, we're not gonna have too much traffic going on from here. So we should get to the location. I'm intrigued to see who is here, which are the guys from the GT8 club who are all connected through an Instagram page. That's the most noise we've had all journey. So we follow the other one, flip a downshift. Yes, we'll get there in a second, see who's about. We are arriving in the park and I can see a line of GT8s. Every time we do this, you get that Skittles approach with all of the different colors. Of course, there are plenty of people out and about with cameras. We've got a few other nice cars around as well. Oh, we've got the V600, V600 Sax. That's the very one that I drove, I guess about a year ago. Super exclusive, very, very special. We've got the GT8s, we've got a 675 LT Coupe in the middle of the line just here. We've got the gray car, we've got the white car. Green is gonna park up. I guess I will head up towards the front as soon as he's parked. No, I'm gonna go and skip on round, see if there's a space up here as well. Alas, there isn't, unfortunately for me. Right, let me spin around and uh, go try and park up on the other side and uh, watch out for cyclists. There are a lot of cyclists about today, but we can make this work. Oh, don't wanna cause them an inconvenience. Okay, we're good. They can get around behind me easily enough. There we go. So, what a lineup. Let me park up. Hello. We have another GT8 pulling in just up there, the black with the red. The white always looks good. And we've also, by the way, if you might have noticed, got a satin blue AMG GTR Pro that has joined with extra green stripes. That's kind of cool. I'm not sure what else is going on, who else is parking up. But we're, being, we're being pretty social, pretty civilized today. Not making lots of noise with these cars. I'm sure you know from the Rev Wars we've done in the past quite how noisy they can be. I should probably, though, come through because I think I need to put the splitters onto mine. So if I just pop open the boot, I actually keep them back here. If you've ever wondered about this, trickle charger, ignore that, it's a bit messy. These are the carbon fiber splitters and they hold on with four screws, which I just keep in a bag with a ratchet. So they're not too hard to actually get fitted uh, and installed. And now there is nobody in front of me, which makes it even better for photos. I was just about to do the second part, done one part, and a nice DBS is pulled in. But this is literally a case of kind of doing this, sticking them all on, down here, if I can do this quickly and easily, there we go, so if you were just doing this for show purposes, that's basically just about ready, so it's find the rest of the screws, yeah, and job done, for now at least, I'll do it properly in a second. The golf car has arrived, golf livery, official golf livery as well, <laughs> to turn around and join. The lineup and speaking of that coming around to the front of my car we now have splitters in place all installed all correct nice and easy doesn't take very long to get that done and looks an awful lot better than when you have the car without it's a small kind of detail but everyone else has them on literally every other car so i kind of had to do it and this v600 just to remind you has a lot of touches from the old vantage v600 v12 vantage there are only seven coupes seven roadsters in total that they made um just a unique design, unique special thing. Seven speed manual, dog leg gearbox inside, 600 horsepower, naturally aspirated V12 up front. Quite subtle for such a car. What a very, very, very special project if you Aston Martin Q uh, as well with the bodywork. And look, for example, there's no bumper all the way from the floor over the headlights towards the doors. One single piece. Um, same at the, the rear. These large panels that you have all around. Very nice car. It's all going on right now. Another GT8, grey with the blue. We've also got a GT3 RS 4 litre, 997.2. Everything happening at once. That's what it sounds like when the valve's open. That sounds 
sounds awesome. V12 firing into life. I think the V600 is going to head on out before some of the rest of us. <laughs> oh wow, okay. Valve exhaust, can open it up. Press it. Wow, that sounds awesome. That sounds really nice. Obviously, yeah. Naturally, that's really nice. Aston V12. A couple of cars heading for photos. <laughs> Which way do you look? <laughs> These things just sound silly. Aston Martins, especially this generation of Vantages, did that very, very, very well. <laughs> snaps into life this time then I think for some of the cars to head on out we've already had a few departures I'll jump back in mine in a moment <laughs> Similar to play garage when you consider the two different options. I think we're going to have the sound of a uh, sort of firing up as well in just a moment. <laughs> oh, it's still so silly. It's a cool view. Let's get this one started up. It's a little bit windy and cold outside. Give it a second uh, to warm the car. It's actually freezing today. We have been standing around for a while. There we go, until I, I think we've got a slightly low tire pressure. Let's just check this quickly. Check tires indeed. What does it say? If we go to the right menu, there we go. Oh, that's all fine, 27. That's not a problem. So, the sun is poking through a little bit. We're gonna take the car though back to the storage. Talk a little bit more about it. <laughs> Amazing. Right, time to go. Off we go then. Driving the GT8 back home. It's such a good club, to be honest. The GT8 club makes the car. It's a strange one, but there's no other community of car owners that I think comes close to the GT8 club. Perhaps you could say the Ford GT has that in a kind of way, but given there are only 150 of these in the world, it's amazing to have so many of them coming together. We've got the GTR Pro right in front of us. I want him to go so that we can be behind. <laughs> there we go. Going the opposite ways around. It's amazing, I've actually got the exhaust valve closed. Let's get that opened up. There we go. Instantly hear it. Ah, that looks really good. I can't wait to drive my Pro. I cannot wait. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, so back over to the storage unit then. And uh, yeah, nice day. There is just something about the GT8. The whole kind of <laughs> ludicrousness of this car. And I'm sorry that I've said it in every single video when I ever drive this one. We've actually got one of the other GT8s currently driving behind. I guess he might be coming past in just a second. <laughs> the golf car. But this, yeah. this car, it's just, it's such a cool thing. If you like driving, it's such an involving driving experience in a fairly modern car, which is just a rare combination. And it's why, you know, it's, a, it's an important car in my collection, a car that's going to be hanging around in my collection. And it's just a fun car and a fun community to be part of as well. I'm back and parked up, and I might say so myself, but Aston Martin made one very good looking car in that generation of the Vantage. Even in the track focused version where you've got the wing on the back and the extended splitters at the front. And talking about the splitters, you will notice I have left them on for the time being, parked back up here in the storage. The problem I have with the car and means that sometimes I need to take them off is to actually take it home to park in the underground garage under my apartment building. Because there are some dips to go down the levels and how far out these stick, they would basically scrape and completely destroy and crunch themselves if I tried to drive down into the garage with them on. The interesting thing about that is out of all of the cars that I own, that is the only one that I actually have that problem with. 
You would think with the Senna, given how long the extended splitter is out at the front, or with the Ford GT, given quite how low it is, that they might be the ones. But both of those cars have a lift system, an ability to raise up the nose, whereas that doesn't. So out of all of the cars, it is the GT8 that is actually the lowest. Fortunately, though, those are actually pretty easy to remove. Now, with the GT8, it is just such a different driving experience. I mean, even compared to the other cars here, of course, this is a six-speed manual gearbox. The others are all automatics, the nine-speed auto and a trio of seven-speed dual clutches alongside. It is a car that, it doesn't make sense, but everybody who owns a GT8 loves it for good reason. It is such an involving drive. It might not be as light as it should, despite having a full carbon body, and it's not necessarily as powerful as it looks, the 4.7 V8 making 446 horsepower. And in fact, it would kind of be an interesting drag race to put those two alongside one another. The G63 is about twice as powerful, 800 odd horsepower. It's also four wheel drive, but it is probably about 60 or 70% heavier. I'm not sure of the exact numbers. This is, well, decently over two tons, and that's a bit over uh, one and a half or so, I would guess. Maybe I'll have to try that one day, see what happens. Manual, of course, makes it much harder to do a drag race but the gt8 club is a great 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 thing the fact that the owners of these cars bring them out even today you know it's cold it's winter time most people wouldn't want to drive a special limited edition car but people do they bring them out we meet up great group of people all enthusiasts driving enthusiasts and it's a car that is all about driving you know it's heavy it's hard it's a challenge heavy in the sense of the steering and the clutch and the gearbox it's a difficult car to get right but when you do it is very 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 rewarding anyway i'm pleased that everything ran fine i'm pleased that three years on it's still running properly we see no issues no further issues with the battery or anything to do with that it has this kill switch which means it actually stops the battery before it completely dies which means that the battery is saved it doesn't get ruined by the fact that effectively it went flat it does however mean that getting back into the car when it, you probably saw that video anyway but basically three years old it's time for the mot it's time for me to decide what's going to happen next at the three-year service in terms of warranty supercharging it something along those lines but in any case it's a car i still very much enjoy owning and very much enjoy driving on the i guess rare times that i do take it out it's not a car to daily drive it's a car to appreciate on special occasions and that is exactly what i shall do anyway thank you very much for watching thanks again to the gt8 club for organizing today and to everyone who came but that is it for this time guys i'll see you again very soon cheers